I thought the best thing to do was to tell you about a thoroughly riveting conversation I had with the FCA. I was interviewed by John Parker. He came to see me, and he wanted to understand the loss of justice perspective. I had a flip chart handy of Mark Henderson that I was working with at the time with lots of data available in preparation for the visit. And I drew this circle on the, on the, um, on the flip chart. He had asked, tell me what it's really like in a surge and what are the dynamics. Tell me how it compares against business as usual and tell me what's changing and what you think will happen next. So I said, well, John, imagine that is the business as usual pot that loss adjusters used to have when men were men and adjusting was adjusting and with better fees, better margins. And I said, this is perhaps 10 years ago. And I said, in those days, much of the volume that we received owed a, lot, a great deal to the fact that there was no alternative if the claim couldn't be handled across the desk. So the default was to send a loss adjuster. Now, there were builders in there. There were many other bu uh, businesses like Jeremy's out there as well. But to keep it simple, I said, that was the business as usual volume. And I'm not saying, John, that life was all rosy and that the service was great. Because let's face it, customer experiences, customer expectations were much lower. And we didn't have to worry about the FCA. Um, but I said the great thing about it was that we could expand from a much larger core. Because there were many more people in those days paid to do loss adjusting in the domestic market. And I said, but today the, mar the market's changed. I said, the same amount of business as usual is out there, but the market's moved on as you would expect, because we have to deliver and match against the customer expectations. And I said, to begin with, there is a plethora of supply chain options which are being applied with increasing um, innovation. And that's offering the client a different type of value, less intrusion in some cases, somebody to do a repair rather than someone to turn up and say, yes, you do have a problem, and then we'll try and sort it out. So I said, you've got to look at that as progress. And I said, the other thing uh, uh, alongside that is that insurers are getting better themselves because they're much more sophisticated at the front end of claims. Typically, in the past, on the left-hand side, the discussion was how much is the claim, and that would determine the response, whereas today, it's about customer need and understanding the customer. And I said, and that's progress too. I don't have a violin, John. And I said, and when it comes to it, if you look at that purple section and the, uh, and the encroachment onto business as usual, I said, you can say the same for the whole supply chain because there is no place for a one-size-fits-all approach. This is the product of a more discerning uh, decision made at the telephone when the customer rings. And he said, well, how do you deal with uh, surges in this market? And I said, well, it's, it's not easy. I said, because there are fewer people. But we've got a great model. And I couldn't possibly go into all the detail and embarrass the competition in the room by telling you all today. But I explained that uh, the green is the extent to which we're readily able to expand. Because as loss adjusters, we're obstinate. We recognize that insurers can't ask their customers to book their claim in six weeks' time because they're busy like a restaurant would. They've got to take the claim, so we should take them too. Said so. I gave them lots of data in the green zone. Then I talked about how we'd expand the rest. Of, we'd expanded the, the uh, resources and brought the might to bear of the business. And I said, I'm not just talking about Cunningham Lindsay, John. I'm talking about adjusting. And finally, you could say that the yellow is the ability to bring in, draft in uh, large resources if we need it. In a 2007, for example, for international businesses like ours which can draw upon people who already know how to drive in the left and know what weighs up in a claim. So people from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Ireland with whom we've got reciprocal arrangements. So I said, we can do all these things. He said, yeah, but what's going to happen if there's a mega event? I said, what do you mean by a mega event? He said, well, I've heard about 1990, and I've heard about 1987, and you know, there was 2007. What would happen? And I said, well, the same thing will happen as happened before. And I said, and there, don't, I said there, there's surge capacity on the right, and there's, there's a limited amount of surge capacity in, in the blue. Um, and I said, so the, the, what will be, the, the same volume of claims will be there, but we have to accept the reality that there are fewer loss adjusters around to deal with that capacity. So new ways will have to be found to deal with that. Then he said to me, well, if that trend continues and it ends up there, how will you feel about that? And how will the customer f figure in that scenario if there is no receptacle into which to pour the very complex claims in such number? And I said, well, I don't happen to take that view. I think that my plan is to stay there. I want to invest in this area, and I'm here to stay. 
And that hinges on our ability to keep pace and deliver value that clients want to purchase. I said, but if it does go to there, then some people will disinvest, and many of them have already, and decided that they'll seek sanctuary in commercial, which is not subject to the same peaks and troughs in a volatile demand. I said, but the, the, the point I'm making, John, is that the difference between the left and the right is there's a much greater gap between business as usual and surge, and it can't be ignored. So he said to me, well, what are you doing differently as a business? And I said, well, we've, we've always got to learn new things. And I said, the biggest point of learning from the 2013 and 14 uh, events was the intense media scrutiny that our clients fall under, which was not apparent in 2007. Now, if there's anyone from Hull here, uh, please don't be offended. But politicians didn't mind about Hull. The point they were really concerned about was when they were posh people in Surrey. But I think that in Hull next time round, and in Sheffield, and in Doncaster, and in Tewkesbury, and Worcester, if there is a repeat of 2007, there will be media scrutiny. And I said, so for us, it was the recognition that we had to think about the customer differently. And we were challenged by a number of our clients, one of whom sitting in the front row, saying, are you paying enough attention to our customers, and are you understanding the needs and tailoring the response? I said, so that most of the changes that we've made as a business are about behavior. They're about having better conversations at the front end, and as I'll come on to say, better conversations with insurers before the events arise in the first place. And he said, well, what about technology? And I said, well, we've got that too. This is what's coming down the pipe. And I described various investments we were making then that have come to fruition. My claims, the opportunity for the customer to contribute to their claims, Rob, if they want to to go online, load video footage and, and uh, photographs to allow us to understand their claim so that we can make better decisions and align the resources according to their needs. And it creates more capacity to deal with people who choose not to interact with us that way. And I said, we've also given our staff far better IT and with lots of other tools. And please understand that other members of the supply chain in a digital uh, environment are moving in that direction too. So I'm not claiming that Cunningham Lindsay has a unique position. I said, that helps, but these are just enablers, because in the end, it all has to be built around understanding the customer need and ensuring that everybody understands what matters most to the customer. So he said to me, can you tell me then, how are you working with insurers? And I said, well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked me that question. Um, I explained that the Environment Agency, I think, uh, a very, set a very good example, because along our river courses, the Environment Agency are very good at ensuring that the sluice gates are managed to ensure that the maximum body of water flows safely out to sea. And I said, and when, the, when the river's in full spate, they also ensure that the floodplains take the, take the brunt of the, of the flow first. And I said, and every time it rains, they're predicting what's going to happen next and adjusting the sluice gates. And I said, and they have the invidious responsibility the statutory power to decide who's going to get it if there's just too much water. And for too much water, John, you might read too many claims. So when clients ask me, what's your surge plan? I say, I'll show you mine if you'll show me yours. And I'll ask them, tell me how the claims are going to be dealt with at the front end. Because if you are going to take the time to deal with the customer on the front end, and you've got good systems, and many insurers today have, then my surge plan will be all the more effective because the claims that flow into the dark blue zone that I showed you before, into, into the loss adjusting zone, will be fit for purpose. And it won't be cluttered with demand. And I said, and if, sure, if insurers tell me that they can't do that, that they can't be in the work and change according to the incoming claim demand, apply the data the way the, intelli way, the, way the environment agency do and adjust the sluice gates accordingly, and for sluice gates, read cash settlements, authority limits, and so forth, then that's fine too. But if I get the claims, I need to be able to decide what we do with them and how they're dealt with. And I'll be very happy to send some of them to the other supply chain if their skill sets are more deserving.